Mm-hmm. It just cut off. Mm-hmm. No, it had died. You guys know, I don't know what Mark and his team have against me, but they shut me down. So I did come back, and I'm going to pick up right where I left off. Hopefully, you ladies will be able to join me. Um, I don't, I'm not doing any music. I don't have anything in my video. I, you know, <laughs> I can't figure why they would shut me down. So I'm going to roll right back into the questions. And again, anyone that is joining me for this live, if you have any questions as it pertains to pipe and drape, if it, if it pertains to equipment, if it pertains to fabric, I got a lot of fabric questions. If it pertains to trainings, anything like that, um, don't hesitate to post it in the comments and I will be sure to um, answer them. So yeah, I'm back in the right group. We're going to try this thing one more time. Okay. So again, I'm back. My name is Precious Stevens from the Porsche Academy and I'm going to roll into the questions from earlier. Um, one question was, what is the best fabric when it comes to pipe and drape and when it comes to cleaning? So number one would be it's really not a best fabric when it comes to draping. It really depends upon the end game. Like, what are you really trying to achieve? Different backdrops, you know, they tend to, they tend to have a different tone to them, right? So it just depends. If I am draping a wedding, right, I clearly would use totally different fabric, totally different textures, totally different colors. Um, as if I'm doing like a kid's party. So the, the fabric that you choose, I hope I'm in the right place. The fabric that you choose um, ultimately depends upon your event, right? And it depends upon how you want people to feel. Because if, I don't know if you believe it or not, but people have a feeling when they enter a room, when they enter an atmosphere. And it really is reflective of everything you use. It has a lot to do with how you design, how you use your positive and negative space. Um, it deals with your colors, your textures, um, if your backdrop is too busy, if it's overbearing. Um, so as it pertains to fabric, I love texture. I love pushing the envelope, right? I know we had, this is where, like, I don't, I don't know where you guys were, so <laughs> I don't know. I'm hoping that you guys see me back in the group. Let me see. Yeah, let's say I'm here in Event Professionals Marketplace. Let me make sure. And as much as I go live in my group, they don't give me this problem. Like, uh, I don't know. So Lorna, I'm sorry, dear, but I, I went live, but for some reason, it's not showing your people. And it did before, so I don't know what I did. I don't think I did anything. Let me see. Yeah, they, it's weird. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I was getting worried, guys. I didn't see you guys come back. So if you guys are with me, it seems like you guys are with me now. How do I, this is so weird. Like, I don't, I don't see any of you guys' comments, right? Like, I don't see any of you guys' names. I don't see anything. So if you guys, somebody put a one in the comments. Like, this is weird. Sorry, Lorna. Okay, thank you, Hunter. Appreciate, appreciate, appreciate. Facebook, I know, Jennifer, you already know. You know how they be doing me up. You know how they be doing me. Mocha, hey, love. <laughs> so, welcome back, ladies. Thank you, because I was about to say I'm in the room all by myself. That is boring. Okay, so, we back. Thanks, Michelle. Thank you, ladies. She said, no. <laughs> I'm gonna make up for it. I'll make up for it. So if I was rolling too, I was like, am I talking to myself? Okay, so I'm gonna go back into, cause I did talk, thank you for the heart. So that lets me know that you guys aren't mad with me. 
So I'm gonna go back into the best fabric, right? So I was talking about fabric because of a young lady that asked about fabric. Hey, Mary. Um, and she was asking, what is the best fabric to use when you're draping? And I was primarily saying, it depends on your event, right? It really totally depends on not only your event, but it also depends on how you want people to feel. Normally, you would want people to feel all fuzzy and warm inside at a wedding. So it's normally like more romantic, more shears, more, it really depends on the couple as well, because sometimes they be having shotgun weddings and it just depends on what they want. But that's a totally different atmosphere if you're doing a kid's party. So if I'm doing something like a kid's party, that's a pretty animated scene, right? So you want to incorporate colors. You want to incorporate things that make people excited. Normally at a wedding, it's a different feeling. You want them to kind of be like, ooh, ah, that's so beautiful. So it really depends. So you really should know that your shears is like a whimsical, soft, really make things feel romantic, right? When you're doing loud yellows and oranges and, you know, you're looking, thinking about a NASCAR, nobody rolling up in an event with a NASCAR backdrop feeling romantic, right? So, <laughs> hey, Clarissa, thank you. So you really got to keep in mind, one, your couple, right? And then you should be asking your couple, even though they may be a certain way, you should ask them, like, how are their guests? Like, are they, are they the turn up kind of people? Like you really should be incorporating the tone of the event into your design. And it don't just stop with draping. It's also your tablescapes, all of that really, you want people to feel a certain kind of way. So when they are coming into the establishment that you designed or you have these amazing backdrops, you want that, that, that design to be relative to how they feel. Um, so if, like I said, if I'm doing something like kids party, I normally always use texture. I'm being honest, a lot of you guys may not know me, but my, my crew that do know me know I'm lazy. I do not do, like doing a lot of labor when it's unnecessary. So I will make the investment to get maintenance-free fabric. And I tell a lot of my tribe members the same exact thing because who wants to work extra hard when you don't have to, right? Give me a fist bump if you feel me in the comments. Like nobody's for all of that. So normally when that's, oh, you guys are on tonight. Lorna got an amazing group over here. Um, so yeah, so normally that's really what you want to do. So I love the four way stretch, even two way stretch, because it's just my ladies that was in class this weekend. Like, it's just amazing how quick they were able to just put away their fabric compared to, let's just say a year ago when we were doing draping workshops and it was like a bunch of sheer. Oh my goodness. We'd be in there like an hour, hour and a half folding like hundreds and hundreds of panels like who really has time for all that nope <laughs> i don't so i love the crush year like you guys see me do a lot of crush year because it's just easy breezy right and she also asks um not only what's the best fabric for draping but what's a good fabric for cleaning same thing like i don't do a lot of the washing and the spot cleaning i don't have time for all that i really don't the only time i um technically would uh wash fabric is if, if it got damaged. And normally that's like it got stepped on or it may got trampled, you know, outside in some kind of mud or something like that. But then again, when you, when you, you know, when you have like the crushed fabric or texture fabric, you just throw that sucker in the wash machine. Like I do, that's what I do. I don't send it to the cleaners. I don't do a bunch of hang it up this way. I really don't. Um, that's the whole purpose for buying premium fabric. It costs a little more, but you sure save a lot of time. <laughs> You save a lot of time. So um, that's why I really, you'll always see me play with a lot of different textures because the first thing I think of me is not the price. The first thing I think of is how much labor do I have to put in taking care of this fabric, right? Because I've had my day when it came to folding fabric and ironing fabric and steaming fabric and who Lord, that's a lot of work. So um, that's how I really got into changing the textures and the blends that I use. And that's where it came from. So I'm like, I don't want to do all this labor. So I say, hmm, it came, it's an experiment. I say, hmm, let me see how this works. And then as I learned to perfect my craft, I start following the patterns and I start following the textures and densities that's just easy to drape. Nine times out of 10, if it's, a, if it's fabric that has heavier weight, guess what? It's going to swoop and it's going to gather and it's going to pull a lot easier. If it's a lighter blend, like your flat voles or um, chiffon is pretty easy, but things like that, and I definitely don't use organza, ever. 
um, it, it takes a lot more manipulation. And those ladies that have palerencia, those ladies that have been in my class see the big difference, a big difference when you are dealing with certain kind of blends. Um, so certain textures do take a lot of hand um, mechanics. It really does. And then some of them, like you guys will see me on a quick little tutorial, just... <laughs> I just grab that thing and I roll with it, right? <laughs> because that's what it's about, especially when you have to go and you have to execute these designs prior to setups. You really want to maximize on your time. So I had posted a video um, probably a week ago from my YouTube channel about really sketching out your designs, right? You don't have to be a graphic artist because I'm not. I mean, some of these designs have stick figures. The whole point is to really just it's maximize your time. So when you go into your setup, you know exactly where your fabric belong as opposed to standing there trying to map it out in your head. Like, okay, I, I remember it looked like this when I was home. Now, how am I going to get this sucker on the pole? <laughs> so that's really what that's all about. Anytime you're doing designs and it's like a gig, you really want to be efficient and you want to maximize your time. So that means buying better fabric so you don't have to do a lot of um, manipulation with your fabric and a lot of maintenance as far as caring for your fabric. When it's time to break down and go home, look, nobody want to sit there and fold 60 panels of fabric and crease and crease. <laughs> you want to really just do a whoop, 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 throw it in the tub and you rolling that sucker on the, uh, on the dolly and you out of there. That's normally how I, I roll with my operation. Um, so that's, that's how I really got into just trying different things. Honestly, it was nothing I seen and I was motivated by. I, it, was, it came from just trying to make it as e the easiest method possible. And when I got into the stretch, oh, that was like, oh, Lord, that was just easy breezy, like some cover girl stuff right there. Like I'm in love with it. It's kind of hard for me to incorporate other textures because it's so maintenance free. Right. Um, so again, a lot of you ladies is coming on late in the game. If you have any questions while I'm here, definitely, definitely, definitely um, post them in the comments. I will uh, answer them. <laughs> she said, your hands are a machine. Hey, for that, yes, I'm back on. I don't. Facebook was tripping a little a little while ago, but they let me they let me through. So don't say anything because the the wrong word they're gonna shut me down. So let's not say anything. Okay, so I'm going to go to the next question, which was, okay, so yeah, same thing like I was saying for cleaning, maintenance-free. I don't do a lot of um, maintenance. I don't do a lot of cleaning. I don't do any spot cleaning, uh, treatment. I don't do any of that. And normally, worst case, if I've ever had to, I use Zeep. A lot of people use um, what is it, the, the powder, OxyClean and bleach and Zeep, hands down, Z-E-P has been my go-to since I was at, I had this <laughs> event and I mean, I don't know if it was spaghetti or I don't know what it was, but I washed those linens like three times and those things were not coming out. And I was livid because it was a lot. I mean, this was like an all white thing that they have, like white and gold. And I'm like, did they know where their mouth was? <laughs> I don't know. But I know you guys didn't know exactly what I'm talking about, right? So I don't remember who it was, but somebody told me about this product. And I was like, okay. And it's for mildew. Or it's, for, it's like a mildew um, treatment um, chemical. But it didn't harm my fabrics. And you know me. I'm, I'm going to take the risk before I tell y'all to do some stuff. Because I thought it was only for white. I just sprayed that thing on pink. I sprayed it on blue. I sprayed it. So that is my go-to. I use Zeep for everything when it comes to stains um, and any kind of spot treatment. And I'll get it online or now they have it like in Walmart, Home Depot. So if you're not down with the Zeep, Z-E-P, go get it. It has a green label. I know they have various different, um, various different kinds for different stains and things like that. You definitely want the mildew treatment. It's, a, it's like white bottle but green label if somebody if somebody had a picture i know a lot of you guys know about it post it in the comments for the other people please um so jennifer so i order my fabric from anywhere <laughs> I, I really do um the what you the key is really knowing the density right and knowing what the value is with fabric since i travel to different um wholesale locations i go to i definitely don't step in a joint ever unless it's like a dire emergency right and that's like hardly ever but i normally know what's the going rate for 
whatever kind of blend that I normally would use. So I will go to the mom pop stores. Um, well, I went to Walmart. I want to say two weeks ago, they had fabric and they had stretch fabric. Now, I'm not saying it was like premium, premium, like the $8 a yard fabric, but it was a dollar a yard. And um, I know I have some ladies in here that came to the workshop this weekend. They draped with that and it turned out beautiful. It was a dollar a yard. So it's really, you just, you can go anywhere to get fabric. And I know this is like a common question. I see it posted in the groups all the time. And you guys think it's like some big secret and it's not. Don't let somebody tell you that it's a huge secret where to get fabric because it's not i told you guys go to your local fabric places they have go all the way in the back <laughs> you know you got to get out the house and get off the line you got to go walk around old school y'all know i'm right old school um you got to get out exercise those legs and go all the way in the back you know the big sign normally sometimes say clearance or you know it just looked like some dingy stuff that don't nobody want you will find the best treasures trust and believe if it stretch even if it stretch like two way and it's like a cotton blend and if it's like a dollar two dollars if if it's more than two dollars don't get it but you better get that if it's like two dollars 199 149 yes that stuff works absolutely fabulous now the key is learning how to use it as an accent piece like i'm not going to say go get bales of fabric that's only two dollars and think you're going to just design this masterpiece and you're going to charge two thousand dollars for this backdrop that's really highly unlikely to happen you really probably should be trying to pair that with some premium fabric so you know <laughs> you got to just tuck it here and tuck it there just so it's an accent piece you're only really using those pieces for pops of color that's it you really need um premium you know some premium pieces to kind of give people that Ooh, <laughs> ooh, right? Because that's really what it's about. But anytime, like, go, go to those spots. Um, take your phones out and punch, punch up some buttons. What's the nearest fabric place? Right? They, they're all over. It's not some huge secret. And y'all know your girl been everywhere. I didn't went to Vegas for fabric. I didn't went to LA <laughs> for fabric, and I found that that's highly unnecessary. Do, now, if you're located in, in L.A., yeah, by all means, please do go to the district because they have some amazing stuff. But if you're not and you're someone like me, you got to travel to L.A. You got to pay your accommodations to L.A. You got to ship that stuff home. <laughs> so by that time, you might as well just bought local because the cost, it really does rack up. So <laughs> that's about that. So the fabric... Go to go online. A lot of you now know that the, the place that I, I recommend everybody, if you're going online, definitely, you know, my um my, my, my homies over at CV Linens, you know, we have a partnership over there with them and they support our Posh Tribe members with an amazing discount. And I love their fabric, like love, love, love. And I love it because they give you a decent quality. It's a great quality. And it's not, you know, they're not robbing the bank, right? Like some of these companies will be robbing the bank. Um, and they're not. So I highly suggest CV Linens. Um, Urquit, like Urquit have some amazing quality fabric. <laughs> Sometimes you may be ready. <laughs> you may be ready to write that check or <laughs> get out that company credit card or something because it can get expensive. Um, when you go on wholesale, wholesale fabric, wholesale direct, that's another company, but a lot of like newbies, the only thing about that, you guys are, so, it's, it's like, it's like a kid in a candy store. Y'all don't know what to get. So you're like, oh my God, <laughs> cause it's so much. And honestly, when you're dealing with stretch with those guys with fabric wholesale direct, you really can't go wrong. You really can't because I have almost every blend that they have. Even their least expen expensive ones, and it still drapes beautifully. It really, really does. So um, you just really got to keep be mindful of, one, how long you want your drapes to be, right? And I, I tell you guys all the time, because I'm only telling you, it is no book. So don't go looking on Amazon for some draping tips book. There is none. I already look. So what I'm telling you guys is from experience because I was the one that was, you know, if it was on sale, I'm like, oh, that fabric only 10 feet. Let me get that. It's only 10 feet for $10. <laughs> and then I ended up with all this stuff, you know, as my group, as my business grew, y'all see me, I'm selling everything because that's not stuff I primarily use. So I tell you guys, when you're making these purchases, I get it. I'm, I get it. 
You guys want to just get in, get your feet wet, boom. You got to be mindful of where your business is going. Like, and you have to be intentional when you make these purchases. Like right now, you cannot pay me to buy a drape that's 12 feet. Or even when I'm buying boats, you can pay me to cut it at 12 feet. Why? Because my next level is draping at 20 feet. So why would I even make the investments, right? So that's, that is what I did wrong in the beginning. I just was trying to get by, <laughs> you know. I had the portable little stand, right? The little photography stand <laughs> that a lot of you got sitting in the closet right now. <laughs> I, I, I think I had about six or seven of them things because my goal was to connect them and I was going to get a whole perimeter room draped with the. We're just going to leave that one right there. So um, yeah, I want you guys to be mindful of where you're going. Where do you really want your business to go? And get out the mind frame of cheap clients, cheap clients, cheap clients, and really focus on you. What are you doing to attract those cheap clients? Look at the thumb and pay attention, not pay attention to the finger. So if you don't really have your position, your business position to attract those guys, don't blame them. You attracted them to your business. <laughs> you blame you. So then you got to do something different. And if you want to attract a higher paying client, you have to position your business to do so. I Meaning you got to stop skimping on yourself. If you're not going to invest in yourself, now let me go back to the questions because y'all know I'm about to start preaching. <laughs> If you're not going to invest in yourself, how do you expect someone to invest in your business? Like you really, and we do cut corners because I still cut corners. I really, really do. I'm not even going to lie. And anytime I'm cutting the corner, guess what? I tell y'all the tips because it don't always have to be, you know, <laughs> it don't always have to be like, it's, it's ways to get around it. But you don't want to cheat yourself because if you're not going to, you know, uh, like I said, invest in yourself and think that you're worthy and you're deserving, how do you expect the next person to? Like, you can't, you couldn't even pass that energy on to them. So a lot of, you know, when you're talking about things and you're like, well, I want to do this, but, you know, I, I don't want to pay that. How do you expect to hear, have a consultation and tell, how do you expect to have that con conversation with somebody else and that you want them to invest in your business, but they telling you to say, I don't want to pay that. Did you did you did you just see that reflection of yourself right there, boo? Okay, <laughs> okay. So yes, that's is what it's about. Thank you, April. <laughs> no, you couldn't have what you've been getting today, Mocha. You couldn't have with what you did, did over the weekend. You couldn't have been getting no. I don't want to pay that. And if so, guess what? You have to realize what you're, what's happening. You are really weaning yourself off, but you you got to just stay the course. Don't put that doubt back in there and be like, all right, I'll, I'll take your business. No, you got to know when to say no. And sometimes you just got to crawl a little bit. That's all. And, you know, I had a lot of rough moments when I was, and I'm not done. So, you know, I'm, I still say a lot of no's now. And sometimes I'm like, I really want to work with them. But it's not conducive for my business. It's not conducive to where I'm going or what I'm trying to do. You really have to be true to yourself first because if you're not, nobody else going to be. So you can't get mad at them. So let me go back to these questions. Oh my God. No, Gore, I do not. Um, I'm so in love with teaching right now. I don't. Like, you couldn't pay me to really set up an event. No. <laughs> Just and not because I don't love designing, because I really, really do. But that's a lot of work. Like, I, I just told you I'm lazy. <laughs> like, why would I do all that now? <laughs> I had my, I, I did my year traveling in the mud, doing all of them free setups. I, I, I will I'm, mm -mm, not doing that anymore. I don't care who the vendor is. Uh, hey, Stephanie. So Bridget, other, other types of fabrics I use other than crush. Let's see. Okay. So, and just in the workshop this past weekend, we had crush here. We had crush taffeta. Oh my goodness. Did y'all see the burlap? Come through with the burlap, like, and I was mauling over this thing, right? I told y'all I push the envelope sometimes. And the only way, because I'll play with it in my head, because I was like, oh my goodness, I don't know, you know, I don't, sometimes I be scared, like my student, they ain't gonna want that. Like they'll look at the bin, and it's so funny because I got in class, right? And so I'll set up all of their bins, and they be peeking, like looking at the colors, like, and they be trying to put their divs, like, oh, I want the blue, or I want the bling. And, and so I'm looking, because nobody want this burlap. <laughs> 
nobody wanted it, right? So I'm like, okay, they think it's, it's not going to, it's not going to come out right. And so I had a trooper, took it, and I was still a little scared because I didn't know how it was going to turn out. And um, turned out amazing. That was my first time ever designing with burlap. Never done that. Um, so you sometimes you just gotta. When I'm in the fabrics place, what I do. Um, we are creatives. This is what we do. So I'm visioning things in my head. And sometimes it get a little crazy up there because this is a lot happening up there, right? So when it's when that's happening, normally I just cut a piece, I'll get like a sample and I'll take it home and then I'll pair it because I got like a whole factory of fabric here, right? So I'll pair it up with what I have. And it's crazy because sometimes I'll be forgetting certain colors I have, and then when when it all come together collectively, I'm like, oh my god. Like that burlap, that did not come together until the night prior to class. Because I played with that thing and I played with that thing because I'm very analytical. But when you do certain things, you got to trust yourself when you're in your element. I know when I'm designing, I'm in my element. When they ask you guys, like, what is your zone? That's my zone. Like, I could do that all day long and I would never complain, right? If somebody ain't pay me to do it, I could do it. I could get lost in it because I just enjoy it that much. So when I'm in the zone... Since I'm so passionate about it, and I know that I am, you know, other, I'm taking this stuff to other people. I want them to be happy too. So sometimes I'll overthink it, like, oh my god, I hope they like it. I hope they like it. I'm glad they liked it because I was nervous. <laughs> oh my god. So okay, yeah. So Bridget, I'll be in New York this month. Woo! This month. So this month we have Charlotte in three weeks. So I'll be in Charlotte three twenty two. I'll be in Baltimore 328, then I'll be in New York 329. And then we're off to Chicago, Detroit, Houston, LA. The ones I'm adding now is uh, Alabama. I had like four or five of them, Dallas. Uh, it's a couple of them that I, I had added. Um, so yeah, we, we, we be all around, Bridget. We be all around. So yeah, Lachelle, I did too. I started with 10 feet. And truthfully, I still, well, I don't really do this design any events no more, but I was still comfortable with 10 feet if it was something like a treat table, right? Like you got to kind of know when to use 10 feet. So if you're doing a treat table, like you don't, you can't really go too much higher because it's going to be overkill unless your treat table is like 30 feet long. It's going to be overkill. So you have to create that balance with your height and you know the depth and all that of the treat table so normally if it's a treat table 10 feet is perfect so that's why i always that was how we created the posh basic kit because it's still a decent height it really really is and especially if you guys like a, a, some people is just that's kid parties that's what they think that's what they do and some people that that's what they really really love normally if you're doing like those kind of venues and the, the standard height is maybe 12 feet max like, you know, it you still is really good with 10 feet. So that was really why I created the Posh Basic Kit because it still is a great kit. The price is ridiculous. The quality is ridiculous to have a three piece that starts at six feet. That was one of my, that was one of my apprehensions when I was designing like events. I would hate having to get on a ladder. I would hate having to get on a step stool. And then it just was, I would just hate it. So I knew like anything that I'm associated my brand with, it had to, it just had to make sense. And until we developed the Posh Mobile Kit, the 6 to 10 was just perfect. And it's still perfect. Like, so when you guys asked me, and that was a question down here, like, what is the best kit for beginners? I definitely do not recommend anyone to get a photography stand. No. For one, they, they're like, what, 30, 50 bucks? Okay. And then when you're doing events, and I think this is why I got out of weddings so fast. Because <laughs> it's such an emotional like that, I don't want to leave, especially if I know I got some stuff jury rigged at their event. And I did that a lot. I'm not going to lie. If you know you got some stuff jury rigged, I, I told you I'm over, I'm an overthinker. I'm very analytical. So I would hate to be gone. And I normally would leave. And the whole time I'm gone, I'm nervous. Like, oh my God, it's going to fall. Oh my God. I'm waiting for the phone. Like somebody going to call me like, precious, is everything just fell down? <laughs> like, Jesus. So I will always like ride back to the venue um like on pins and needles and it was it just be so funny i could laugh at it now but at the time i was not i was not laughing i was like i would be looking before i could even get to the you know to the venue like did anything fall down and i knew like for one 
I couldn't operate like that. Like that, I don't even, you cannot pay for a peace of mind, right? I didn't care. That's when I went and got certified and I was like, I ain't care what it was going to cost. I, by, I, I knew I had to have a peace of mind, right? And I knew when you're dealing with em engagements and things like that, that's that important to people's lives and those kind of memories, I do not want to be on media takeout or none of those sites and my event then blew up or the cake, the lady didn't, you know, the bride didn't slip. I, <laughs> I do not want to be associated with nothing like that. So if I had to invest, you know, some money to, to, to eliminate that from happening, you know, the liability issue, then that's really what I did. So that's my primary reason for telling you guys, I get it. You know, you know, you got to just do what you got to do to get to that point, but be intentional, right? Be intentional, even if that's the case, because I started with the photography stand. I'm not going to say I didn't. Even if that's the case, you definitely have to have a, a plan developed. Like, okay, I'm only going to use this thing for three times. Then you should have made your money back and some by then and have enough to invest in commercial, um, a commercial stand. I would highly suggest just do away with them. Don't even... Save your 30 bucks, boo. Put your, put your stuff on layaway, right? You need a commercial kit when you're draping to that magnitude. You do, because it's just, it says a lot about your business. If you're trying to attract that kind of clientele, right? There's no way you can roll up on me and say you're going to charge me $28, $29, $55, dollars and you're coming up to my event with photography stands. It's not, I'm, I'm, mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> You, you owe it to yourself and your business. You owe it to yourself and you owe it to your business. Um, wait a minute. Yeah, so Karen, the um, thanks, Loka. So I do know, well, it depends. For, the, for me, like say if I was just draping events, I would sew broad pockets in my fabric. I would. Unless I'm using them for like the balances and things like that. No, I wouldn't. Um, but for the sake of class, since I teach primarily, that's all I do. I don't, I purposely have a lot of my students pinning fabric because you know, you, you kind of want to prepare them for things that's going to happen and everyone can't sew or not because it's, you only need a straight stitch, but everyone is not, you know, they don't want to do that. So it's just other ways you could do it. I tell them use the witch stitchery, right? Like some people don't want to sew. So if you want to use the witch stitchery, you can. Some people even use hot glue. I would never do that because it just, it really had your fabric looking crazy when it's time for you to drape. Um, but it's just different things you can do. Some people, like I, I tell my students to pin because I think that's just a skill they should know how to do. So I do that on purpose, right? I really do that on purpose. Um, but it is something I don't enjoy. So if I was going to drape at an event, I would definitely put, because um, I like it's just you want, you want to maximize your time. No one want to be at an event pinning some fabric and tucking, and that's not what you want to do. So you want to normally, anything I have to do prior to setting up, I do. So if I got to sew panels, I get them done. Um, or I'll try and repurpose my panels. Like I know how to not sew my panels because I'm going to use them a specific way. Right. And I can get away with it. Um, but that's just, that's when I'm being lazy. I'm just being honest. Um, so the current, the burlap, I would pin, I would, but, and for this, um, particular class, I didn't because I really did want the young lady to pin and know how to pin because it's, it's, it's an art to everything, right? Some people pin and you can see the, you can just see it and it's wrong. Um, so I do that on purpose, but yeah, normally I would sew raw pockets on my fabric and I would not like, you know, if you buy fabric from the store and it's a raw pocket at top and bottom, I'm not doing all that. I know I, know I only need one, right? I only need one raw pocket. So I normally just would sew the one in and leave the other end as such because, you know, unless I'm doing like tent draping or something like that, which I hardly ever do that. That's a lot. Um, yes, Tamika. So I haven't added it yet. You let me know if you, I know, cause I know you're coming to Houston. You let me know if you prefer Dallas because it's like, it's around at the same time. I believe it's the very next day. Um, let me know I, in my inbox and I can get back to you tonight. So yeah, you definitely can switch if it's, you know, if it's more conducive to you to stay in Dallas, that's no problem for me. Um, yep. St. Louis, we come in. Um, 
Yes, so Stephanie, she says she know I'm passionate about poly stretch. Now, I'm not passionate about poly stretch. I, didn't, I never said that. I really don't like poly stretch. Um, I really don't. I think poly stretch, it has a real dull look to it. Um, and poly stretch is not, I would prefer a cotton stretch over poly because poly stretch for some, they consider that a premium fabric. And for what we do, it's not. That's that's like convention center kind of stuff, right? That's stuff they use because they want to black out certain areas and, you know, they want to drape off um, walkways and things like that. For what we do, that is not premium fabric. <laughs> you'll be better, you know, you're much better off. We get the cheaper blend so it could really create the dynamic you're trying to create with your draping. Um, so I don't have any poly um, stretch. I don't. But yes, but to answer your question, so... Satin, I'm real trick. I'm real funny with satin. Um, satin is just, <laughs> I, I will use it unless it's like a wedding. I will always use it to a cert certain degree with a wedding or like a Kinsiata or something that gives that kind of um, tone, right? Or like baptisms, things like that, right? If it's like a party, um, like I was saying, them kids' parties, I wouldn't throw no satin up in there. If for one, it's too shiny. And it just doesn't, some people pull it off very well. I wouldn't do it. I like when it's those kind of things like NASCARs and Tonka trucks and um, things like that. I love a matte look. I really don't like the shiny. Uh, I'm sorry, y'all. Y'all know I'm, I'm still sick a little bit. I really don't like the shiny um, sheen that it gives. So I hardly ever use satin. I just don't like it. Um, like I said, unless it's like a Christian or something like that, then I would. Um... But Stephanie, I use everything. I use jacquards. I love jacquards. I love um, velvet. Y'all know I'm crazy about the velvet. I love it, love it, love it. Now, velvet, you guys got to understand, velvet is, and it's kind of been trending, but I think now it's coming into our realm a little late because some of you guys think it's it's like um, seasonal. <laughs> no, it, it's not. Now, I can see if you're talking something like burgundy, then yeah, maybe. But the way they're pairing burgundy now with like the, um, blush and the champagnes, like <laughs> people is using that thing all year long, especially the emerald. Like you would naturally think emerald is, you know, seasonal, Chris, you know, around Christmas or winter. <laughs> nope, emerald is is, is <laughs> and I used to hate emerald. That's my birthstone, right? Like, ugh. But nope, they they taking over. Um, and they they killed last year, so like they doing that all year long. Uh, let me see what else. Yeah, like I know. Well, no, I, I think if you, if you, Lachelle, this is for you. If you um, properly like do your bottom, your puddling and all that, then yeah, like somebody would have to really, for them to trip over it, like they would have to really be a klutz. <laughs> I, I just got to say it. <laughs> they really would. Like if it's tucked properly, um, they is is highly unlikely that they would trip and that's the whole purpose honestly for tucking your fabric and not only is it for um creating a polished look but also is a say it is a safe hazard when people just drop their fabric and like boom like like they drop the mic right some people do do that but and i get it because you know they may not know the proper way to you know polish a butt a butt a, a bottom or puddle it so that is a that is a, a safe hazard it really is um yeah, hot glue. I definitely, I, that's, I have never, I have never hot glued fabric, but I, I hear people, I just try and sympathize with those, you know, that don't know how to sew. And, you know, I always try and give every possible, you know, um, way that they can achieve getting, because I want people to, you know, stop buying them panels and, and just get the boats because that's where you really, really, really go and maximize your dollars and get the most value for your money. Um, so it's just different ways you could do it. Like I said, pinning is, you know, sometimes pins going to be your best friend. I tell all my students like pins, you better go and invest in them because they're going to save your butt. A lot of times, you know, you don't know what's going to happen on site. You really don't. So you kind of got to, you know, you got to have everything in your fanny pack. You got to be armed. <laughs> y'all know, y'all know how it be on event day. You had it all mapped out until you got there, right? Then things just started, <laughs> then things just started happening. That's normally how it go. Oh my God. So yes. So let you let shout. I get you. Yes. Some yeah, uh, if the fabric is like just there, someone can trip over, especially if it's like in areas where people take photos, 
that used to be one of my, my you know, I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> you know, I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, they gonna, the whole system is just going to fall down. So, yeah, I agree. Yes, Tamika, Charlotte has seats available. Tamika, the, okay, so the first one is Tam, Tamika Graves. Yes, seats are available for Charlotte. And Tamika Costin, yes, I will be coming to VA. I did not realize I had such a big following in VA. So now the toss-up is between Richmond and I, I forgot the other location, but um, Hampton, Hampton. So I got to figure that one out. So yeah, I'm, I'm de definitely coming to VA. Absolutely, Stephanie, you'll get there one day. And until you do, you know where to find me. I'm always online. I'm in semi group or in my own. <laughs> and that's just the truth. Well, now I'm more or less in my own. I, I spend a lot of time in my own. Um, for bet. So, so I'll have to watch. Oh, the, I mean, well, <laughs> honestly, for bet, you want to go as high as your people going to pay. And I am for all for y'all know people, you, you guys that on my lives often, I'm all for an upsell, right? Like the goal is you should always be upselling. Like clearly a backdrop that's 12 feet tall is going to be a lot less expensive than something that's six feet, six, 16 feet tall, right? Like going tall, those grandiose um, backdrops is like, it's so easy because it gives, for one, if you have that kind of client that wants that, it, it's so easy to get, it's the same design. But you're just going higher. So it's not really a lot more work unless, as long as you have the equipment. Whereas though, you know, you're, you're doing, let's just say, triple panels and uh, quadruple panels and perimeter draping. And that's a lot more work. Really going higher, that's so easy to really get more money because you're doing the same design. You're just going a little higher. So the only key is you have to have the equipment and you have to have the fabric, which is why, like I said early, earlier, don't limit yourself if that's what you see. If you see somewhere in the near future, you know that that's the client you're going to target. Stop thinking about them 10 feet panels, boom. <laughs> that ain't going to get them. <laughs> that ain't going to get them, right? So it's going to keep you locked in to uh, attracting a certain kind of client. But when you're going for that more grandiose look, it's so easy to really get more money because um, you, you're providing more value because it just gives that that look. But that's really key when it comes to knowing your client. Like you have to know. I just got finished talking about this. You have to know your client. I don't mean just normally I ask this question and I'm not even going to get too far into it because y'all know when it's about client attraction, that's my thing right there. But normally, you know, so you'll get an answer like, oh, I serve couples or, you know, oh, I serve single moms. Like, <laughs> and then I'll ask, and a lot of you, a lot of you know, because y'all been on my coaching calls, um, I'll ask, and I'll, my next question is describe your child, right? If somebody described their child, it's a lot more char characteristics involved. My child is quiet. My child likes to read. My child eats this. <laughs> what? <laughs> You should know that about your client, right? You really should know that about your client. That is how you um, really describe your ideal avatar. She should have a name. My avatar name is Kim. Kim stay over there in the corner over there. Like, well, you know, the little dressed up doll. When I'm thinking of things like, oh, I, I got a new program or something I want to implement. I'm looking at Kim. Kim looking at me. And I'm like, Kim, you want that? And she'll tell me yes or no. <laughs> I'm not crazy, y'all, but really, this is the process that I go through, I'm telling you, because when I see Kim, I see my tribe, right? And that is really, that's the same thing that you guys should be doing. When you are thinking of things, like for Bet, you just said, when you're going for those higher grandiose, if that's your client, you shouldn't even be entertaining the idea of grabbing some fabric at 10 feet just because it's on sale, right? You should clearly know, okay, how much it costs? That's not who I'm attracting, so that's not for you. Um, and that's really what's key. So like I said earlier, like a lot of you late, some, some ask like, what's the best fabric? It's kind of hard to answer that because on this end, I may have, let's just say Samantha that loves doing kids parties. Right. And then on this end, we have, um, Sharon that loves doing elaborate weddings. You're not going to find the same kind of fabric in their inventory. It's going to be totally different. It's not to say what's the best or what's the worst. It's totally different from who they're, who they're targeting. Right. So that's why sometimes it get tricky when you answer that. So I try and say it really depends on the atmosphere. It depends on your clients. It depends on who their guests are. Like, you know, they turn up people or are they just like prim and proper? <laughs> I want some tea. 
and you know, you're dealing with pastel colors and you just got to know your people. <laughs> oh, you got to know your people. So yeah, so for that, I'm always like, oh, yeah, and I, I'm always going for taller because that's the easiest way to get more money. It's the easiest way. And it gives a more premium look. It really does. And then you are also attracting the, the whoever that client was that you serve, you're attracting thousands of other people that's like them. That's the whole key. So that's why you really got to know, you know, who your who your avatar is. So if your avatar is um Jamie or whoever. You got to create things for Jamie because thousands of more Jamie's going to see it and thousands of other Jamie's are going to book you, right? You're not looking to, um, you know, attract people that's not in your um, ideal audience, um, you know, database. Okay. So, um, yeah, to anyone, I don't, I don't want to flood. Um, this is not my group. I don't want to flood Lorna's group with all class stuff. So if you, anything you want to know about a class, you clearly can hit me in my inbox and I'll give you all that information. Like I said, right now is only the eight cities that's already scheduled already on the roster all the way up until June. We do have two, four, six, eight, eight more locations that we are adding. Um, so if you want that information, I clearly will give it to you. Hey, Casey, they're going to have one of my alumni ladies that rode. I, I forgot. Casey rode from NOLA. Like, and we had who somebody this weekend rode from Mississippi. Like you ladies are amazing. And this group, this platform that you guys are on, like Lorna group is amazing. So I'm, I'm coming to where Lorna is. Right. So I want to let you know, like the kind of person Lorna is amazing. It ain't too many learners in our industry. And y'all, y'all know that, right? Um, Lorna found out that I was coming to, um, I don't even know where I'm going. I'm going to say Connecticut, Charlotte, <laughs> Charlotte found out I was coming to Charlotte and she reached out to me. Like, cause she, cause she assists, like how could she, she located some, uh, venues for me like that. She ain't hit me with an invoice. <laughs> Nothing like that. That is like rare. That is rare. And I, I do have some pockets every time I'm, I'm doing a workshop. I do have a lot of you ladies. Um, that do reach out and offer to assist. And I, I humbly, humbly, humbly appreciate that because you guys know how this industry is. You guys, you that's all I'm going to say. Y'all know how it is. So even if you guys, if you don't think you are or you don't think you are in a place where you can help and you can reach out and you can give value to another colleague in this industry, trust me, you can You can, you can, you can, you can, you can. And if nothing else, I want you guys to leave this live Think, be intentional about that. Like, how can you help the next person? Because it's going to come back tenfold, right? It's going. I, I didn't. I didn't never knew Lorna was really in in Charlotte. Like, the, I, I, it's just so much that we deal with. We don't remember those kind of things. But you know, when she implemented herself into my, you know, what I had going on, I will always know that now. I will always know that now. So I want you guys to just kind of take that. And, and relic in it, like really, really, really lead by example because it matters to people like me anyway. Some people don't care. I'm gonna tell you, your girl over here at the Bosch Academy, she cares because it's very rare. It's very rare, I'm trying to tell you. It's very rare. Um, so yeah, so just really, really, I, I love Lorna's platform. I love to be a part of her platform. I love what she's doing right now, opening up her platform, which is her group. All of you guys, you guys are her followers, her subscribers. Some of you guys we share, but I love the fact that she was able to open her platform to us, right? Like that's like, how dope is that? That's dope. So can, can we get some fist bumps in the comments for Lorna, please? Because that's dope. I, I, and she need to know that whenever she watched the replay, if she ain't here right now. Um... So, hey, Glenda. So how I price, oh, that's a whole loop. So pricing is different. And it's so funny because I just went over this too, right? It gets real intricate, right? Because everybody think, or I don't know what they think, but this seems to be the thing that everybody do. They go, they do their little FBI work, right? They go and look at different websites and they see what people charging and then they just slap them prices on their, on their stuff. Like, if that ain't the simplest thing I've ever heard of. Like, I'm not saying don't do market research. Of course, you should know what your competitors are charging. But what they charging got nothing to do with what you're charging. So you should really have your pricing schedule on some kind of 
system, some kind of formula, right? What I charge for my backdrops, you're not going to find it in the book. You want to know why? Because it ain't no book that's going to tell you how much I invested in my business. There's no book that's going to tell you how long I've been doing this. There's no book that's going to be able to measure my design level, right? So it's, this kind of stuff is not something you find in the book. Is the standard um, rule of thumb for draping dollar up, dollar over? Yes, it is. By that, I mean... Let's just say, and I'm, I'm just going to make this quick because it can get intricate. Let's just say you have a 10 by 10 standard backdrop, standard, meaning one color, right? One layer. That's only 100 bucks because it's a dollar over, a dollar up. So if it's 10 feet over, that's 10. If it's 10 feet up, that's 10. So 10 times 10 is 100. But that's only for the design right? That has nothing to do with your hourly rate and your hourly rate not going to be the same as my hourly rate. Why? Because your goals is not the same as my goals. Why? Because your income of whatever your number is, I'm quite sure it's not mimicking what my number is. Why? <laughs> and those that know me and been in my stuff, they know why I keep saying why. Because you keep saying why till you get to the, the actual bottom answer. My business is, is built on my why, my values, whatever my dreams, my vision. So it's different. It's really all for me. Yours will be designed for you. So I may charge $50 an hour. I may charge $200 an hour. And guess what? Someone else that design may charge $500 an hour. It's totally, totally different. So the actual base pricing is rule of thumb is dollar up dollar over so if you're going 10 and some people really make it simple by just charging 12 dollars a foot 15 dollars a foot you it gets intricate because you got to consider your embellishments you got to consider your upsell you always should be upselling like i will never and i have never done a basic backdrop like the conversation never stopped there. there's no always oh would you like to add this can we add that oh you like that oh how about this so, <laughs> so I'm always able to price up, right? Because you show them things. And the most common thing is for humans is, oh, yeah, I want that. Oh, I want that, right? So I'm always able to price up. But it's funny because even in class, we started with this backdrop, right? The backdrop started at 100 bucks, like I just told you guys. But by the time we finished with every single element, the backdrop, I think, it was like 1025, right? And, and, and unless you learn this, you really kind of don't know. You don't know. So you can't, I don't, one thing I don't want you guys to do is kind of just mix and match prices. Whatever Sally down the street charging for her work got nothing to do with you, right? Got nothing to do with you. That probably should be something that you just take in consideration or like kind of know the ballpark figure. I get it. So you can know if you're like way off, like nobody should be charging <laughs> maybe $800 and you just slap. $3,800 on that thing, right? Just because it feel good. But hey, they say dream big. So if it feel good, they roll with it. I don't know. <laughs> but it is an art to it, right? And it's just certain elements that you got to configure that part out. How much is how much I got to pay for my business fees or my business expenses every month? Totally probably different from what you pay, right? I have a whole team now. What I pay now, ladies, gents, whoever here, I never, I, when they tried to tell me a year ago, this is what I would have to be paying. I said, okay, goodbye. And I did that for a very long time. And guess what? I stayed where I was for a very long time. Well, for me, a month is a long, a long time. But the minute I got out of that crazy stinking thinking, I was able to grow. I was able to grow. Did it cost? Yeah, it cost. But I was able to make my money back so much quicker. Like, so now you know, all the things they were trying to tell me then, well, you got to pay to play. And I'm like, what are you talking to? <laughs> but I get it. I get it. So the pricing thing is, 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 it gets intricate. It really do. But just standard rule of thumb, if you want to simplify it, some people go from 12 to 15 to $17 per foot. The standard rule, like I said, is a dollar up, a dollar over. Um, and that's kind of a good way, a good place for you to start. But again, you got to put in your de delivery, your setup, your breakdown. If you have um, a crew, you got to pay them, got to pay gas, you might got to pay tolls. All of that got to go in there, right? So it could be, it just depends. Some people package their backdrops like now I do because I, I don't have time to do all that line item. You know, you got to pay for the cookie. You got to pay for the pen. 
I ain't got time for all that. I know that this backdrop generally gonna cost about seventeen hundred dollars. That's how much it costs. Um, so until you get to that point, you know, just you you continue to you continually do meaning the newbie line items so you can know exactly where your price points lie, right? So just kind of get same thing I tell in, in class, get used to measuring, right? Really get used to measuring with tools until your eye is trained enough to just look and say, Oh, that's a little off. Oh, that's a little off, right? And that's just it's just really repetitious. It's really repetitious. So I know I was really, really running my mouth, guys. It's nine o'clock. <laughs> like, really? So April, I hope that answered your question. Um, that's kind of how I price. Hey dad, hey dad. Um, Nessa, Nisa, I hope I'm not messing your name up. Honestly, I am a very I'm a Gemini, so I, I feel things to a whole nother degree, right? So I normally always kind of take in consideration how I felt at certain events, right? Because this was before, you, you got to ask people, like, you know, how, like I just said, how do they want the room to feel? If it's like a, you know, <laughs> they they two-step in and you want to you know that information because I don't know if you believe it or not, but how you set up that room and how you, the colors you use is going to make it's going to strike emotion right colors is is a very real thing when it comes down to design it really is not only colors but also straight lines and the um symmetric the symmetry of the room like all that is at first i ain't i'm like y'all talking crazy but it really is true it really is true um so that's really like a part of the is it's, it's crucial to when you design it and I honestly don't know how I learned that. I think I just, I don't know. I'm just in tune with emotion. I like, I always look at how people feel and, and, and just in my experience, I knew like, okay, I, not, I know not to do that again. Right. Or I know not to, you know, one thing I know I never did. So clearly if you guys are not doing this on your consultations, please start today. I never at first what you know, you always want to ask the people, well, what do you want to see? What colors you like? You always want to know what they like, right? I never knew <laughs> you supposed to ask what they don't like. I'm like, oh boy, did I oh I mean it wasn't super, super horrible, but it was I think it was like a color like blue. And for whatever reason, this lady did not like blue. Now it didn't like totally, you know, it, it didn't ruin the event. But she just was like, you know, it would, it could have been so much better if it wasn't blue. And so I get it because for me, that was like a color for me with yellow and green. Like, I'm like, you clearly messed that all up <laughs> because only because I don't like those colors. Right. So if you guys are not asking your prospects what they don't like, you better start because that is so important. You, I know you're going to ask them, well, what do you do? Like, how do you want to feel? What's, what's this? That's for no, that's crucial. Ask them like, what is it that you don't like? Is there any colors that you don't want to see? Because colors do strike emotion. I'm telling you. Why you think those colors are like yellow and the mental institution and blue and then purple? Like it's it's for a reason. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> I tried to tell you. It is. <laughs> Thank you, V. <laughs> hey, Misha. <laughs> Man, Misha went to our way together. Um. Thank you, April. So yeah, I hope it was helpful. If um, let me see, did I ask all these questions? So yeah, the, the satin drapes, size, pipe and drape. I answered that. Oh, printed backdrops. Let me answer this real fast. So y'all know I got a lot of printed backdrops because I'm I'm all about the branding, right? So when I first started, my printed backdrops came from, I think, oh, oh stickers and banners, because you know I, I do all my branding myself. So my printed backdrops first came from stickers and banners. I would design it right in Canva. I love Canva. So I would design it in Canva and then I would send it off to them and they would send it to me. So when I got into like the fabric, I use Georgia Expo. Um, they made one for me. Great, great fabric, right? I, can, I can't, I cannot say nothing about my, that backdrop is amazing. The, the quality of the material, the colors busting through was like amazing. One thing when I went to, when I was in Vegas last year for wedding MBA and I had my booth. Now I didn't have a lot of you know, stuff around my booth because I was doing draping. But one thing I can say, so many people, and it was some amazing booths up there. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it was some amazing booths. And I ain't have all that pizzazz, but I did have my backdrop. And I knew that the purpose was 
no matter what, I have to represent the Porsche Academy at, at all times. And I'm a walker and a talker. So I say, well, if I'm gone, how are they going to know that, you know, this, this is where we at? So that was the reason why I took that backdrop. And I kept getting so many compliments on that backdrop. So many people say that was very, very, very smart um, because I was still, you know, people were still able to identify me even though I was gone. I'm over there talking to this person and I'm at that booth and I'm, you know, looking at the stage people and <laughs> I was gone. Your girl was gone. <laughs> so I got that one from Georgia Expo. Then I had got another one with my logo for my coaching program um, from Canvas ETC, who is who I deal with now. You know, I'm a brand ambassador for them. Big ups to Canvas. And the last one I created, which is for my masterminds, that I created that myself. So I did the graphics. And again, I sent that off to stickers and banners and they sent it to me in like two days. So that's where I got all my signage from and signage is important. And so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm all for the, the branding. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that there. But so the top tips for beginners and intermediate, I think I kind of dropped enough of that now. Top tips is definitely biggest thing is invest in yourself, right? Really, really, really invest in yourself. If you are not really at a place where you're ready to take your business serious and treat it as a business, don't get mad at it because it's treating you like a hobby. Don't. Like, you know, it's going to treat you how you treat it. That's just the nature of the game. Um, and then when you're ready, it's going to be ready. Right? It's going to be ready. It's, it's ready. It's waiting for you right now. All you got to do is show up and dump into it. And that's really it. And I understand like monetarily, like you, you may not think it, you, you can do it right now and I get it. So if that's the case, I highly suggest you get into these groups. Like these groups, especially ones like this, is a lot of valuable information here. Like we do dump. There are some groups that really do genuinely dump golden nuggets um, just with the um, common nature to wanna help somebody, right? My whole YouTube channel. That's a lot of golden nuggets over there. Like at first, one thing I can say to you guys is I know I got some instructors here or some people that got some t teachers and stuff and some stuff. One thing when I first was getting into the Lord of Teaching realm and people kept saying, I kept hearing this, give away your best stuff. <laughs> I'm like, no, you guys, mm, I can't do that. But, because <laughs> it ain't make sense at first. But I, because I was, I was thinking, well, what if I give it all away? I'm not going to have nothing to teach. Lies. I'm telling you, in this industry, man, it's, it's no such thing as never having nothing to teach because it's ever evolving, it's ever changing. And you as a service-based business, you as an influencer, you as a whatever your business model is, it's your duty to really um, educate yourself, right? You can't just jump in and be like, all right, I'm here. All right, I'm done. I know everything. You're going to be lost in the sauce, boo. Those over there that's investing in themselves, you're going to be looking at them frustrated like, Guess what they doing? They still they, they ain't even stealing. They attracting your clients because <laughs> they doing what you're supposed to be doing. But I, that was one thing I can tell you guys is educate yourself by any means, whether it's free, paid, whatever. Get yourself a mentor, and your mentor y'all should not be parallel, right? None of my mentors are at my level because if they are at my level, what can they teach me, right? And no one that that subscribes to me or that's really in my tribe or those that I coach. We're not at the same level. What could I teach them, right? That's that at that point it's a collaboration, <laughs> right? So really, you have to um, really network with those or, or learn from those that you you're motivated by, right? Then it's not about um, that's what it's about. It's just they have to be at a place that you want to aspire to, right? They got to be the people that I learn from today. They got stuff I want and they know it because I'm gonna tell them. <laughs> I don't want that. How you get that? And they tell me, here go your invoice, boo. <laughs> and I get it. I totally understand. I totally understand. But that's what it's about. Get yourself a mentor. Some of these YouTube channels are amazing. Amazing. If you have time, I tell you guys all the time, you're going to be wealthy in certain areas, right? It's either you have money or you have time. Figure out which one it is and run with it. If you got time, you better strap on them boots. And I, I, I'm telling you, when I was working at my job, I had no idea I was going to leave. I really did. I thought I would be working until my daughter turned 18. True story. When I was working, you know, I knew one day I would be leaving, but this was a hobby. I'm like, oh, I got all this time on my hand. Let me, and y'all, some of you guys know, because y'all right there with me. I'm in my office. 
and you know I'm picking up phone my, my desk and I'm on live right and I'm teaching draping right I'm doing online workshops I'm doing all this stuff and I'm supposed to be working but what I mean by that is those of you guys that's working and you know <laughs> you know you need an exit strategy start now start don't wait till you leave and then you in a rut because like oh now now is a different it's, it's yeah, the motivation is different the motivation is because you got bills to pay right so it's gonna be a lot more frustrating so if you have time now put that sweat equity in if you gotta get up an extra early before you go to work and sit somewhere in a, in a nook and, and read a book <laughs> i like that in a nook and read a book <laughs> If that's what you have to do, by all means, do it. Because it's the only thing you're doing is you're putting in the sweat equity right now and it's going to pay off. If you got to not take lunch, like I love the ladies I talk to on their lunch break. Like they are sacrificing their lunch just to get some coaching. That's like, that's amazing. I'm like that kind of stuff. Y'all know I love action takers. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. That's the sacrifices you're going to have to make right now if you're working and, and you have the hopes of one day leaving soon. Don't wait till you put that pink slip in or don't wait till your supervisor piss you off and you throwing stuff off the desk and then you out there and you don't have a plan, right? Don't want to do that. So do it now. Get like do it, do it, do it now. Um Natasha, I'm the I'm the Posh Academy everywhere. You can find me under a rock, the Posh Academy. <laughs> It's gonna be the Posh Academy or Precious Stevens. Like you'll find a blimp in the sky. It's gonna say the Posh Academy. Like that's just what it is. Um, but yeah, D, invest, invest, invest. And I'm not saying like throw all in. Be mindful of where you're investing because <laughs> some of it. Just be mindful. Do your due diligence, guys. There's a lot of great instructors out here. It's some people, especially now. I've seen some amazing conferences put on. Like, unfortunately, I haven't been able to go, but I've seen some amazing conferences put on. Like, really take advantage of those opportunities because it's so much knowledge in that room, right? And you don't. I would not advise you guys to jump on the first thing cooking. I wouldn't. You have to do your due diligence, right? You got to make sure your chemistry match right just because everybody slapped that coach name on there you know on, on the, the, their uh, website don't mean that they the perfect coach for you uh -huh. ask me how I know I found that out the wrong way too um so you have to do your due diligence right but at the end of the day if you really want to position your business and and you know you really want to make increase your profits and you really want to attract a different kind of clientele you got some work to do because they're not just going to show up at your doorstep, especially if you got um, Kim or whoever next door, then and she doing all of the right things. Like, why are they coming to you? <laughs> what, what are you doing? That's going to make them walk, skip over Kim <laughs> and come to you. So think about that. And I, I'm definitely I'm rooting for you guys. I love, love, love what you guys are doing. I love anyone that's following their dreams. I really love when you are in your zone i just told y'all what my zone was i love that like that is what you are designed to do don't think you are designed to get up and push a time clock or you got to, to you know you you got to retire no you're not supposed to work for 40 years just just enjoy 10. no that's not what we are designed to do i i, I learned late but i got it now boy i got it now <laughs> So that's all I have, ladies. That is all I have. And gents, if there's any guys here. Um, hey, Joan. Yeah, B, I think Iwet is amazing. I have nothing. Like, Iwet is amazing. If, especially if you are into event design. Like, they, they go through everything. Like, tablescapes. And it, it's a lot. Um, it's a lot. It depends on what you're going for. Like, people have different reasons for going. I was only interested in draping. I'm not doing no tablescapes and I'm not doing candles. And I'm not doing all that. So <laughs> for me, it, you know, it wasn't something I needed to do. But for those that's in the industry, like you guys is doing full scapes, like full events by hands down, they teach you everything. Like they really, really do. Um, it's definitely well worth the money and um you, you'll get your money's worth. It's like a, a, an amazing five days and full. like I said, they, they teach you everything. So you you will enjoy it. You really really will. Um, the same way you was attentive on this little live. <laughs> Imagine that times twenty, right? Or this little hour you got like I don't know forty. Imagine that times forty. Um, so yeah. 
Absolutely, Queen. You're welcome, welcome, welcome. Yeah, so th th any of you ladies, if you're checking into that, by all means, I, I highly suggest you guys check that out, if, especially if you want to learn everything like what the, uh, along the scope of what they're teaching. Um, but you also, I do also want you guys to look, 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 you know, at some of those other conferences, right? That's doing something very similar, right? I mean, I'm just, I, cause I've just been impressed with a couple of them and I can name a couple of them off my head, off the top of my head. I'm going to give kudos where it's due. I know Deborah put on an amazing, um, conference, the planners, I don't know, but y'all know Deborah. Deborah put on an amazing, uh, conference. I know Shamira has an amazing conference, and actually, I'm speaking at her conference in LA, um, presenting at her conference. She put on an amazing conference. I know Latrice puts on an amazing, I think she got one going on right now, right now in Houston, I think. I don't know, but amazing conference. Um, I don't know the names, but I know there was just one a, a couple of days ago. I, and I, as unfortunate, I don't know the names, but guess what? I will know the names because I heard great things about it and they're along the people that I want to be acquainted with. So definitely check those ladies out because they do have some really valuable um, information that you guys can really learn from. They're dropping golden nuggets, right? From the same industry that you're in, they're serving, um, you know, if not something, something real similar to what you are trying to do. And I just told you guys that you want to really align yourself with people that's already doing what you want to do. That's the whole goal. Isn't you ain't got to sit out here and, and scramble, right? You really don't. You just really got to align yourself and connect with the right people. You really do because it's all about the shortcut at the end of the day. Everybody say it's, not, it's no such thing as yes, it is. They say it's no such thing as a shortcut. Yes, it is. Get a, get with the right people. I, I yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. Now I'm sorry, Natasha. I don't know the locations. I. I think Deborah in Philadelphia. I don't know. I'm I'm bad with that. I really am. But if any of you ladies, you know, anybody that catch the replay or something, know any of those people, uh, definitely tag them so these guys can have information to their workshops. Um, by all means, and then you know you got the bigger ones, the Preston Baileys and um, uh, the the uh, what's her name, Ellie. Uh, uh, I don't know if it's a conference, but they have some stuff going on, like amazing lineup. Uh, the Devereaux, amazing, amazing lineup. Um, so you, you definitely just check that stuff out. Uh, and that's all I have, guys. That's all I have. No more. You don't have any more questions. I'll see no more questions. I had an amazing time with you guys again. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lorna, for sharing your platform with me. Yeah. So D, take take advantage of all that. You will you will be highly impressed. You will be really happy of what you've done. So I'm going, guys. If you have any questions for me or you want any information, hit me in my inbox. I do answer myself. Is that a bot over there? So good night. Have a good one. <coughs>